Greetings from Bermuda, this is BDA Lamy. Welcome to Chrono Arc, a roguelite deck builder that has been in early access for I think the last four years now, but it is releasing into 1.0 next week. That is the 26th of April 2024. Uh, so we are going to jump in and have a look and see what it's like. Uh, so I have actually done a couple of runs in the game so far just to get my head around how it plays. Our runs are quite long, um, looking at about three hours for a full run. Uh, so we'll see how we go. So every run, we begin waking up in our bedroom. So the storyline behind the game is basically that a long time ago, the world was enveloped by the dark fog and mankind evacuated to the Ark. It was a protected area of space-time, I guess, that had been built. Um, however, to restore the world the way that it was before, we must collect a set of time shades and then go to the clock tower and restart the clock tower uh, and that will restore things to the way they were before so let's see whether we can do that uh so the uh area before we begin a run um is this kind of interactive hub so there are various things that we can do here we can talk to the different characters you can see standing around who are all characters that we can take with us on our quests. This is a party-based roguelike. Um, we also have these credits, you can see up in the top left corner there. Um, so that is the kind of meta progression currency that you earn as you do runs. Uh, and you can spend them on various things in this hub area. Um, one of the things I believe uh, is from here, Leanne, uh, Lucy, and that is us. Um, the mission given to the investigation team is very important. So the investigation team is basically the group of adventurers that we are going to pick to accompany Lucy uh, on her mission to try to reach the clock tower. The area below the arc is very dangerous, so as a training instructor I'll teach you some simple skills that you can pick up pretty quickly. Um, so obtain a parry attack skill book for 8 credits. Uh, let's do that. Parrying is the action of reflecting enemy attacks. If successful, you will not only defend against your enemy's attack, but also render them vulnerable. Parrying is very advantageous during combat when done properly. Uh, so we obtained a parry attack skill book. Um, so I assume that means we're going to start with that on every run through the game. Skill books are uh, things that you pick up uh, during the run normally, um, which you can use and they will give you uh, a pick of a new card. Um, so given that we're getting it um, here, I'm assuming this is a, a permanent unlock. Uh, okay, she's got nothing else for us. Uh, so this is one of the characters that we could choose to recruit. Uh, Trisha, what's your business with the training ground? This is no place for a kid like you. I'm not a child. You a newcomer? Whatever, try your best then. Nobody with that amount of pride ever survived for long. Okay, so the interactions in this hub area with characters uh, I think are not particularly significant, so I'm not going to spend uh, too much time talking to everybody right now. Uh, the other place that we can go to spend our meta currency is here, the research lab. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of these things here that we can pick up now. Um, you can see uh, there are more of these skill books here that will give us uh, cards, not showing us the abilities there that we could get with them. Um, you can uh, buy, if you buy out everything in the research lab, next time you come back there will be more things to buy. Um, so that is not a complete set of things that you can get. Uh, there's also this vending machine here, uh, which sells gift items. Uh, so uh, not atypically for kind of games of this style, you can buy gifts and then you can give them to the characters in your party. Uh, and that will increase their uh, companionship with you. Uh, when you reach a certain level, I think that character gets a benefit when they begin the game. Um, so I, I, we've got seven, seven to spend. I don't know. I don't know how well, how worthwhile these are. Um, they probably are worthwhile. Um, it, when you give a gift. So we'll pick up gifts as we go through the run as well. Uh, when you give them to a character, uh, which you're going to need to do uh, after a level has been complete or after an act is complete, um, 
it will unlock a dialogue scene between the characters. Uh, and so you gradually learn more about the different characters uh, and what their role is in this world. Uh, so I'm going to pick up that um, and just leave there. Let's do one. Okay, let's head in and begin a run. So we need to pick two characters uh, to be the part, part of our to be in our party at the start of the run. Uh, as we go through, we will be able to increase that up to four, but these are the two starting characters. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different characters, uh, a lot of which start locked at the beginning of the game. Um, they have different archetypes. So the ones with the sword in the bottom right corner are uh, DPS, um, the shield are tanks, uh, the cross are healers, um, but uh, they're not rigid classes. Uh, so this class, uh, for example, Miss Chain, is nominally a tank class, uh, but she's actually really good at DPS and healing as well. Um, so it's, yeah, it's not fixed in stone by any means. Uh, I am going to start with two characters that I have not played with before. So I've played with all of these. Uh, so I'm going to try Johan, uh, and we will recruit him. Uh, so these tokens of friendship here are the things that you can get by giving gifts to the characters. Um, and let's go for Charon as well. Um, okay, so a mysterious girl called, who goes by Charon. There seems to be another side to her despite her first impression. Charon is a dark priest who borrows the power of evil to claim the souls of her enemies. She specializes in pain debuffs, has decent healing abilities which make her excellent in long battles. I'm actually picking two classes here that are DPS archetypes, um, but that should be fine. Johan was an ordinary young man who lost his lover at the Twisted Land. So the Twisted Land is the area that we're going to be adventuring through to find the Time Shades. After training hard to seek revenge with his anger, Johan became an expert in archery. Now he volunteers at the investigation team to reunite with his lost lover. Johan specializes in utilizing his fixed ability and grows stronger with the amount of skills in hand. So every character has a passive ability. Uh, they don't start the game with it. You have to level them up to level one before they get it. Uh, but that's pretty straightforward to do, so we'll get that pretty easily. Uh, let's just go with these two, see how we get on. So once again, uh, this is uh, Lucy. So Lucy accompanies the two members of the ex of the investigation team. The beginning. Um, and she does have some cards as well. So if we go here, we can see um, the cards that she has. So they're called skills. Uh, and I'll go through how all this works, but this is her uh, deck, such as it is. Uh, this is Johan's deck, so at the start of the game, uh, all of the characters have basic heals, basic attacks, and then some card that is unique to them. Um, so you can see the same with uh, Charon as well here. Um, don't worry about all this stuff, I'll explain this as we go through. Um, we have items up here. Uh, that we will be able to use. Um, uh, skill parry attack. Okay, so this is what we learned in the area before we began the run. So let's use that now. Uh, so parry attack is uh, an attack. It costs two mana, deals 22 damage, uh, but it's on a countdown and we'll see how that works uh, when we begin the game. We can basically choose to assign it to either character, and which character we assign it to is going to be important. And you'll see why in a minute. Uh, we've got two of them though, so we'll give one to Johan, and we will give the other one to Charon. So they both have that card associated with them. Um, okay, so this is how the game plays out. So we uh, are progressing through see, the five or six uh, areas. There will be a boss at the end of each. If we defeat the final boss, we win the game. My first run through the game, I did defeat the final boss, uh, but I clearly wasn't meant to because I saw a special cutscene that said, you're not supposed to be seeing this cutscene. Um, and it uh, defeated me anyway, which was frustrating. Uh, but I guess I was I, not supposed to win the first run through the game. Uh, second run through the game, I got all the way to the final boss and was one turn away from defeating it and then died. Um, so we'll see whether we have similar luck this time. Uh, but yeah, the 
Uh, each level you are basically wandering around through an overworld area, um, but you're encountering fights and events and shops and so on, much as you would in Slay the Spire. That's just that rather than a, a linear map, um, you get to wander around through this uh, pretty 2D um, map. Uh, so this icon here, so this area here is the way to the boss, so we don't want to go there just yet. Um, yellow question exclamation marks are events so what we found here is an abandoned pharmacy where we can obtain two tablets or two herbs or an alchemist's house where we can obtain one random potion we can use a key which we have one of to start the run with to obtain one more random potion and a relic pouch um i don't want to use my key just yet so i'm gonna go here uh, I can't remember what tablets and what herbs do. We'll take the two herbs. Uh, they're usable in battle. Oh yeah, okay, they remove pain debuffs, which can be super helpful. Okay, we will keep venturing west. So we're just looking out as, as we move, basically. There's nothing, with one exception, there's nothing in any of these hexes other than ones that are marked uh, with some uh, special icon. The exception is that every level does have, kind of like Binding of Isaac, it has a secret uh, chest somewhere. Uh, and that somewhere will usually be in a hex that is surrounded by a large number of other hexes. Um, and you need a special scroll to potentially be able to reveal it. So they're quite hard to find. I have yet to find one, uh, but they are around. Let's jump in, do a battle and see how the combat system works. Okay, so this is the enemy that we're fighting. Uh, this is the health bar, reduce that to zero, we win the fight. These are the two members of our party down here. Um, and this is the, uh, these are the cards in our hand, basically. The mana cost is on the right here in this diamond, and you can see we have three mana to spend here. There are two different types of mana. There's uh, purple mana and there's blue mana. If we play a card that has a blue mana cost, then the countdown number under the enemy here will not count down. Sacrificial Toast, how are you doing? Good morning. Um, and that is a good thing because when this action count reaches zero, this enemy will do something, uh, which usually means it will attack us. Uh, and every time we play a card that has a purple mana cost that will count down by one is it nice somebody recommended this to me uh a long time ago when i was streaming um and i bought it and it's been in my steam backlog for a while and i've been going through my backlog um trying to knock some games off it and so i came upon this and then yeah i discovered that it's 1.0 next week i i, I really like it i might have played so far two runs that i've done uh, okay, so this guy, uh, also you can see in the top right corner, has 50% armor. So that means the damage that we do is going to be reduced by 50%. So basic attack deals 12 damage. Uh, that means uh, we hit him, he's only going to do 6 damage. And you can see which characters uh, these, each of these cards is associated with. And that is important for this reason. So when we play a card from a character that has a purple mana cost... Um, it increases the cost of all other cards from that character by one. You can see we're, we're about to do the basic attack now. And this is showing us that the cost of the basic heal or care on has gone up by one. Or it will go up by one if we play this card. Um, similarly, if we, well, if we played the uh, basic attack from uh, Johan, uh, that would increase the cost of any other cards of his that we had in our hand, uh, which we don't have any at the moment. Uh, if we play Lucy's cards, uh, so we've got Lucy's Accelerate card here, uh, that doesn't affect the cost of anything. Uh, well, uh, would it affect the cost of her other cards? It might, if she had any purple cards. Um, accelerate. Uh, and so the, the difference between blue and purple mana is this keyword called Swiftness. So if a card has Swiftness, that means it's blue mana. Otherwise, purple mana, but they both come out the same mana pool. 
Uh, can overload, but accelerate is swift, right? Okay. Yeah. So overload is the is the name of the mechanism whereby the cost of cards gets more expensive with each, for that character with each one you play of that character. Uh, okay. So accelerate. Yeah. Um, a skill will gain swiftness, so it will go from purple to blue, and it will its cost will be reduced by one. So if we accelerate uh, basic attack, that has now turned to a zero cost and uh, it's now uh, swift. So if we play it now, it doesn't affect the cost of the other card that Charon has to basic heal. Uh, so let's do that. We'll hit you with that for six. Uh, and then we will hit you with that for six more. And we win. Uh, and after each fight, you get a bunch of loot. Uh, so cubic ring equipment. Max health plus four, some gold, and soul stone. And soul stones are these things, and we use those to level up. Should do that now. Uh, so equipment, every character except for Lucy has two equipment slots. Uh, we can choose to put equipment on them. So Johan's got 23 health. Charon's got 22, so let's give her the ring. And she is currently the weakest. Uh, and we can either level up individual characters, uh, both start at level one, or we can level up the party. Uh, we can either increase the maximum mana that we get each turn uh, for the party. So currently we're getting three a turn. We could increase that to four, uh, or we can increase the card draw that we get each turn. Uh, and currently we have a card draw of two. How does that work? Is that two cards per character? Because we drew four per turn, right? I think that must be two cards per character. Um, and if we level up one of these things, we will get and to pick a new card for, for Lucy as well. So I'm going to do, I'm going to increase max mana. Oh, and again, maybe we don't. Oh no, it's only if we do add card draw, we will get to pick a new skill for Lucy. Uh, skills, cards, same thing. All right, let's keep exploring. Uh, so I'm, as I'm exploring, I'm kind of looking up in the top right corner here to see the dark gray hexes, which are the unexplored areas. Uh, this is a abandoned church, and this always has a chest in it that's locked and that we need a key to open. To drop a turn, but the draw upgrade doesn't boost it. It just adds a draw skill for Lucy. Ah, okay, okay, I can't realize that. Um, so have a choice of two relics. Uh, the Ocarina, in the first turn of battle, gain four more exchanges. I haven't talked about exchanges yet. I'll talk about those uh, in the next fight. Or, uh, when gaining a barrier buff, gain nine additional barrier. Only activates once per turn. I actually don't use exchanges that much. Probably not as much as I should, so I'm going to take the Sacred Cross. Uh, now, the difference in this game... Uh, with other games, other roguelike deck builders, is that when you get your relics, they're not immediately equipped. Uh, and to actually use this, we have to wait until we get to uh, the campsite, which will be after the first boss. And there's then a place that we can equip this to get its benefits. So for now, that is actually doing nothing for us. A wander over this way. Uh, remains of a wagon that was being transported. We search it, we find bread. Uh, so we start with two bread as well. Uh, we can use it. So anything that says usable in the field means uh, where we are now as we're wandering around on the overland map. Um, we can use it to either restore a single ally's health by 20% or if we wait until after the boss fight and we get to the campfire, we can use bread to restore all allies' health by 20%. Uh, and then gold and another soul stone. And let's do another fight. So two enemies this time. Um, okay. The amount of time that we have to play cards before they will do something is dependent on our speed stat. So the lower our speed, the fewer actions we will get to take before they act and the higher the speed, obviously, uh, the reverse is true. Um, the, actually, let me wait to talk about exchange, uh, for a second. So what have we got here? So dark heal, um, damage 10, 
ignores taunts if either of the enemies have taunts. Deals 7 additional damage if the target's health is below 50%. If the target is an ally, they will be healed instead. If this skill defeats an enemy, it can be reused at zero cost this turn. Dark heals created by this effect cannot be reused. Okay, that's nice. You can use it as either an attack or a healing spell. Then Sonic Blow. Uh, damage 14. Uh, so all the uh, cards also have an accuracy, which is the chance to hit with them. Uh, so you can miss. Generally, the accuracy of everything that I've seen is pretty much nearly 100%. Uh, and there's also a crit chance as well um, with each attack. And each character has their own uh stats related to great actually i don't know if uh if they differ intrinsically yes i think they do so karen has a hundred percent accuracy johan only has a 96 percent accuracy by default um if you have a card that you uh can't make use of or you don't like so say we had a pure healing spell in our hand now that we didn't need because we don't need to heal you get one exchange per turn um and so you click this you can then pick a card and you will discard it and you will draw a new card instead um so that is what uh it meant uh by the thing that we said you could get four extra uh, exchanges on your first turn we'd have five exchanges instead of the, the one normal the other thing that we can do, uh, which is situationally useful, is uh, standby. So, it, like it says here, it reduces all enemy action counts by one and allows them to act first. So if we want, uh, normally we want to get as many actions in on the enemies to try and kill them before they attack us. Sometimes we may want to let them attack first while we still have some actions left to do. So maybe we won't let them attack us because we've got a heal in our hand and then we'll still on this turn be able to use the heal to heal. Uh, so that can be situationally useful as well, uh, which is a nice little extra thing to think about. Uh, so what are we gonna do here? So that's 10 damage, that's 12, 14. Uh, he's 12 health, 50% armor again. So we are gonna, I think we're just gonna basic attack him. One thing about the enemies in this game is you see that they're gonna do something, but you don't know what they're going to do, how much damage it's going to deal, or which character they're going to target with it. Um, so you've kind of just got a plan around that um, and be okay with whoever gets hit. As you play the game more, you'll know what the different enemies do, um, and so you'll get a better idea of, of yeah what they might do. Uh, but you don't, you never know for sure. All you know is when they're going to do their thing. Um, another thing that I didn't make clear is. Uh, if this count reaches zero on our turn, they will act during our turn. But if it doesn't, we end our turn, then they will act anyway. Um, so and we don't get to kind of avoid them. Uh, one other thing I didn't explain was these things down here. Uh, so these are what are called fixed abilities. So we can fix uh, just about any of the cards in our deck as a fixed ability. And it increase, if we do that, it increases its cost by one, but it means it's always available to us to use down here. Um, so by default, you can see that um, we have fixed uh, Johan's close range shot. Um, and this would normally be free, um, but because we fixed it, its cost is now one. Uh, and for Karen, uh, a basic attack Actually, something's going on here. Why are we? Why is the cost of her cards up by one? Oh, her cost of her cards is up by one because we played one of her cards. That's right. Um, so yeah. So normally this would be um, two cost as a fixed ability because as a regular ability it only costs one. Um, so yeah. So you, you can you can change that depending on what skills you want to be available to you all the time. Uh, okay. So since her the cost of her cards is going up, we want to do a basic attack. Uh, Johan instead, kill that. We have two more actions before she's going to attack. We're not going to have the mana to do it anyway. 14 damage, 10 damage. We can't kill. Uh, yes, we can. Because that does 10 with 7 additional... No, 7 additional damage if the target's health is below 50%. Uh, which isn't 
So we can't kill either way. Uh, Sonic Blow. If the user's fixed ability is active, bring three random common attack skills to hand and apply discarded after two turns and exclude onto them. Stops creating skills once the hand is full. This is not going to be useful for us because we're not going to be able to do them. But if we did do it, you can see yeah, it's brought these extra cards into our hand. Um, all right, we can't kill. End turn. She is attacking Johan for a bunch of damage. Uh, so when we get hit by enemies, we don't immediately lose the health. Uh, so you can see uh, we get this green section on the health bar instead. Uh, so the green bar is called the healing gauge. Uh, and this shows how much health we could restore uh, with a heal. So if we do a heal on somebody with a... Um, so, so you can see here, Johan has two, point, two points in his healing gauge. He's got on 21 health um, and the green gauge it goes all the way to full. So if we do a heal, we, will he we would heal those two points fully. If there was any additional part of his health bar that wasn't green, uh, we can still heal that as well, but it doesn't heal at 100% uh, of the value of the heal on the card. If Johan gets hit again before we heal him, then he loses the healing gauge. So this is kind of like being wounded, and so we get a chance to heal. Um, and if we take it, fine, we keep the health. And if we don't take it, we lose the health, and then it becomes much harder to, to heal it back. In this case, that's not going to be a problem, though, because uh, we can just kill her. Uh, so let's do that with uh, anything. We've got a whole bunch of new skills coming in here. Where have these come from, actually? These are not in his deck. Where have we got all of these skills? Uh, hmm, okay, interesting. Maybe it was the, what we drew in last time. What's Reckless Charge do? Damage 37. Uh, actually, let's just, let's just use Dark Heal. Dark Heal. We'll worry about all those other cards later. I don't think they're a permanent part of our deck. Okay, what do we get for loot? A Lifting Scroll uh, disables all curses from equipped items. Remove all possible secret walls from nearby tiles. This is what I was mentioning earlier about the secret area on the map. This gives us a way to potentially find it if we think we know where it is. It's still a bit of a shot in the dark, though. Uh, but maybe we'll see whether we can find one. All right. Event. Potion Cafe. Obtain two random potions or, which is safe, select one ally skill to upgrade, but the skill owner loses two maximum health. I think I'm going to go for that. Uh, let's open the safe. And we are given a choice of uh, two for each of our characters. We can only pick one, though. Um, okay, we pick it, we can view the upgrade options. All right. Uh, what does parry attack? So three options. We can either move the skill to the top of the hand when a battle starts, apply a weakening debuff that grants 15% armor reduction, and apply two stacks of that if there's only one target, or reduce the cost of the card by one after ending the turn. Um, okay, and we can't, we can't back out now, so we're committed. Let's... not particularly useful having it on the top of our hand when a battle starts. So let's do it so it applies a weakening debuff. Uh, and then we have to reduce skill owner's maximum health by two. So Karen's max health goes down by two. Uh, we have three silver stones now, so we can do another up. Uh, okay, Shake Dust got put into Lucy's deck by, I guess, one of the enemies in that last fight. Um, we can be able to get rid of that. Uh, one useful setting of the options that's not enabled by default is, dis is display skill ratios. It shows a percentage next to damage to healing of skills, indicating what percentage of your attack or healing power it deals. Okay. Um, display skill ratios. That one. And that one. Cool. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? Uh, 
why do we level up Johan? So when we level up a character, uh, the I think the stats increase. Looks like his accuracy's gone up. Uh, his health goes up as well, and we get to pick one uh, skill, one card that we want to add to our deck. So uh, Sonic Blow is another copy of that. Imitate. Uh, it has, uh, again, you can see the difference between the cards that have swiftness and the ones that don't. So the ones with swiftness, once again, are the ones that will reduce, that won't reduce the enemy's count, whereas the ones without it, the purple will. Uh, add a random ally attack skill to hand and give it exclude. Its cost becomes one and gains a supply arrow buff, but its damage is reduced by 80%. Uh, and at the bottom of the card there, it is showing you uh, the buff or debuff that will be applied. <laughs> it's taken me a while to kind of figure out uh, what some of these mean. I think what that means is, uh, so self-supply arrow is one of two, means that most you can apply two stacks of that buff to a target. Uh, Sacrificial Toast, correct me if I'm wrong here. Turn infinite, that shows you how many turns the effect lasts for. So if it's infinite, then um, it lasts uh, forever. Some others like here, you can see uh, it's a burning arrow for seven damage and will apply one stack of burnt, which will last for three turns and uh, applies flame arrow to self, uh, which will last two turns which adds the burnt debuff to fixed ability. So the fixed ability is the one uh, that I mentioned before that's always available that is at the bottom of the screen in your character's box. Um, yeah, learning this game, there's, there's quite a lot of stuff going on. Uh, burnt is a pain debuff. That's what that purple skull means there. Uh, that inflicts three damage per turn. Success chance, I'm presuming that is the chance of applying the debuff to an enemy. Um, so it starts at 110%, but there is stuff that can modify that. Cool, thank you. Um, having not played this character before, I have no idea. What does exclude mean? Sacrificial toast. Uh, is that like exile? So it adds a random a random attack skill that you don't have to your hand and exiled if played or discarded. Cool, thank you. Um, this becomes one against a supply arrow buff, but its damage is reduced. Oh, okay, so supply arrow, so yeah. Um, the supply arrow buff there, you can have a two stacks at most, and it doesn't do anything until you have two stacks. And when you have two stacks of it, you get a mana back. Um, I don't know. We'll just do, do Burning Arrow. Uh, and go back. Uh, one nice thing about the Overworld map is you don't have to wander around if you need to backtrack. You can just click on an area and go straight there. We have explored everywhere. My guess is that if there's a secret area, it is probably this hex here. I don't know for sure. Let's see. So I think the way we tell is we just go next to it and then we use our lifting scroll. And if we got it right, it will appear on the map, but we didn't. So we got it wrong. Oh well, such is life. Um, and there's no other dark squares visible here, so this is the entirety of this map we've explored. So let's head over this way and do the first boss fight. Johan's general gimmick is spamming his fixed ability. Oh, really? Uh, so Burning Arrow is solid. Okay. You remind me what that is, actually, because I, I, yeah. Uh, you only unlock the fixed ability at level one, right? So Master of Archery. Fixed ability is changed to close range shots. Fixed ability is refreshed every time you play a skill from hand that costs one or more. Right, so normally fixed abilities, you can only play once per turn uh, from any character. So if you use any character's fixed ability, it disables all of the fixed abilities for all the other characters for that turn. So him, you can refresh it, play it again every time you play a skill from hand that costs one or more. 
Skills created by other characters cannot refresh fixed ability. Okay. Uh, and what's Karen's um, passive? Oh, we still need to level her up to get it. Okay, so fine. We won't worry about hers just yet. Okay. What I found in this game is there's, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of enemy variety, uh, but there is quite a bit of boss variety. So every time you defeat a boss, um, you unlock a different one. Uh, so this guy I have not faced before. So uh, Burly Shield blocks one attack. So presumably that means we do no damage to him for our first attack. So we should use something uh, that's low cost on it. Uh, parry attack, so damage 24, countdown 3. So, while the skill is under countdown, if the selected target attacks a party member, redirect the attack to yourself and cast this skill immediately. The redirected attack deals 35% less damage and cannot reduce heal engage. Heal engage once again is the green part of the health bar. On a successful parry, gain 1 additional mana next turn. Um, countdown, countdown. So this skill will cast if X amount of skills are played or if you end your turn. Works the same way as enemy action count. So yeah, we play it, it doesn't trigger immediately. We have to play three more skills or end our turn in order to trigger it. Um, he's not going to attack us while it's under countdown because his uh, action count is 9 plus. Uh, let's make that cheaper though. Uh, that's a decent amount of damage, so we'll play it. Uh, and then we'll just do, we don't need the heal, so we'll do a basic attack. Gets rid of his guard. Uh, oh, I, mm, yeah, okay. Maybe I should have done this. Plus win shot. Damage 8. Can we cast this skill? Whenever you play a skill, it costs one or more. Right. This skill does not stack supply errors buff if it is used for free. Right, okay. So the deal is you, you want to use that multiple times. That will give him this buff. And when he gets two of them, you'll get some mana backs. It will you'll be able to do a lot of stuff, basically. Right. Um, so this might be a good time to use exchange because we can't use the heal. So I'm going to exchange that. Okay, we've got a basic attack. Normally we could play it, but because we've already played another of Charon's cards this turn, this cost has gone up from 1 to 2. Uh, so that's all we can do, end turn. Parry attack triggers, then he does his thing, uh, which happens to be uh, some damage. I think we saw there that um, this guy dodged the attack. Right. Uh, and the buff that we there we keep as well. Um, it doesn't go away because it's, it's turn infinite. All right, so uh, I know it's the best thing to do. Give me that, which does nothing. Then we play one of his cards, uh, Johan's cards. We'll do Burning Arrow. Uh, yeah, okay, so that added another stack of uh, that buff, which gave us a mana back. So now we've got four mana rather than three. Do Burning Arrow, that reactivates this. So we can do that again. Eight. Uses a stack of supply arrows. Uh, if we do uh, his basic attack again then, even though it's more expensive... Oh, it kills him anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, uh, actually, that would have reactivated that, but it would be cost one, so we wouldn't have been able to afford to play it anyway. All right. First theory of the game is very easy. Um, so, yeah, defeating the first boss is, is not an issue. We get herbs, uh, which is more of what we bought earlier. Money, soul stones for leveling up. Bell of Salvation, which is a piece of equipment. I think it's the first, first piece of equipment. A uh, box of friendship, uh, which we can use to get a random gift item. A golden skill book, which will give us one rare skill for one of our allies. 
uh, another soul stone and credits, which is the permanent meta progression currency. We'll take all of that. Let's use the golden skill block now. So choice of Hell Arrow, 25 damage, deals five additional damage for each skill in hand and two damage for each skill in the discard pile. When cast, discard the bottom skill in our hand. Okay. I see, so yeah, there's quite a few cards that, um, amongst all of the characters that refer to the position of the cards in our hand as well, which is nice. Not many games do that. Uh, Shadow Pillar, uh, 7 damage. The additional damage equal to all debuffs uh, of the target and the user. And it applies 2 stacks of encroachment. Deals 6 damage per turn. So that's the total. So it's 3 damage per stack of encroachment. When this unit dies, pass encroachment to a random unit on this character's side. Encroachment applied this way cannot be resisted. Okay, nice. Um, oh, but just raw damage. <laughs> Give me raw damage. Let's open the box of friendship. Uh, we have obtained a gift item book. Uh, and the Bell of Salvation uh, increases debuff resistance by 20%. Uh, increases debuff success by 20%. Faint resist by 40%. So faint resist is... If our health is reduced to zero, uh, or if our green health bar is reduced to zero, the character faints, i.e. they die. Uh, and faint resist will give us a chance of that not happening if the green health bar is reduced to zero. Uh, so, I don't know, it doesn't matter who I put that on. I will put that on uh, Johan for now. Um, if one of our characters does faint, then we have Lucy's necklace that we can use to revive them. Um, and this will restore one charge at a campfire. Uh, you start the game with this only having one charge uh, for a run. It's got two charges now because I upgraded that as part of the meta progression after my first run. Um, so yeah, you, you do have ways to bring dead characters back if you survive the battle that they die in, died in. Uh, we've got no draw skills. Obtain Lucy draw skills by spending soul stones in the info tab. Uh, okay, is that a bad thing? I take that that's a bad thing. Let's uh, let's add some card draw. Spend two of our four soul stones. Uh, and then we get to learn a skill from Lucy's set. So recycle, draw two skills, gain two exchanges for this turn. So that's where we can swap uh, cards that we don't want to use. Draw, draw two skills. If there are no skills in hand, draw three skills. Snack time, choose one, draw two skills, or restore three mana. I like the idea of that. Let's take that. Uh, we've still got two soul stones left. Let's use those to level up Karen, and that will give her access to her passive soul therable. Uh, gain the item soul therable. Souls inside the therable can be consumed to restore health. Soul therable is charged by one for every three enemies defeated. Okay, uh, and we get to pick a new skill for her. Focus Encroachment. Damage 6, applies 3 stacks of Encroachment, dealing 9 damage per turn. Okay, that's the, what we saw uh, earlier on the other card that we didn't take. Dark Barrier, um, deals 8 pain damage to the target and applies a Dark Barrier. Wait, uh, No, sorry, okay, so this is applied to an ally. So we deal 8 pain damage to an ally and then apply, apply the Dark Barrier buff to them, which gives them pain resistance, 19 barrier, which is like block and persists between turns. Uh, I think this is all right. Sacrificial Toast, please do jump in if I'm getting any of this wrong. Uh, when the barrier duration ends, attack all enemies for the remaining barrier amount. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I hate any characters that, that do self-damage or deal self-damage to my allies. I, I'm very averse to that. Um, soul Stigma. Whenever a party member loses health, this character receives 7 damage. Uh, so we apply it to an enemy. Uh, when a party member loses health due to another party member, 
Soul Stigma deals critical damage. God, okay. This this character is one of the ones that you don't start with at the beginning of the game. You you unlock her as you go. Um, so she is a bit more complex to play than the starting characters. Uh, I'm just going to go for Focus Encroachment because it's the easiest for my tiny brain to understand. Uh, and okay, so we got Soul Theory Bolt as part of her skill. Active item usable in battle. Heal an ally by nine. 35% of our attack power plus 5. Okay. Loot. So I guess... Uh, oh, we don't actually equip... We don't need to equip that? Okay, well, that's good that it doesn't take up a slot. Um, all right. Onwards. This is the campfire. Chance for us all to heal and do various things. Talk to each other, give each other gifts. Uh, recruit new members of the party. Uh, there's a little bit of dialogue between everybody. Let's uh, give our gift to somebody. So these are all of the gifts uh, that I have uh, seen in previous runs. We don't have any uh, copies of them in this run. This is the butterfly knife that we bought at the start of the run. Uh, this is the mystery novel that we acquired during the run. Um, what would our what would our people like? Uh, we basically have no idea at this stage. Uh, let's give a butterfly knife. So it tells you at the bottom here uh, preferred gifts, but we don't know what the preferred gifts are. Um, I don't know. Karen seems like she might appreciate a butterfly knife. Uh, are we exchanging gifts? But I don't have anything I can give at the moment. You're just going to give it to me? Thank you. She seems to be thankful. Can we unlock a little bit of her story. Oh, are we finally taking a break? Yeah, let's rest a little at the campfire. It's your first time in the Twisted Land, right? Aren't you tired? I'm fine. Really? That's awesome. I've been feeling nervous since it's my first time as well. It's not actually my first time, it's my third time. It's your first time? Did I never tell you? It's not like I'm a real investigator or anything. What? I never told you this either? Didn't you say you were the veteran dark priest investigator? Where'd you get the veteran investigator part? I only said I was a dark priest. Why did you follow us? Why indeed? It's to collect the time shades and save the world. There's no rule that you have to be an investigator to join forces, right? Yes, that's true. Well, let me ask a different question. What is it? Why are you a dark priest? You're asking why I became a dark priest? Obviously, because it's cool. Why is it cool? Well, as you know, priests are supposed to use holy magic and be all brimming with light. So usually priests try to learn holy magic. It's become like an unspoken rule to do so. Dark priests are the apostates who completely deviate from this road. Due to the nature of dark magic, they must always hide in the shadows, and they are never officially recognized as priests. That's why their numbers are pitifully low, and no one tries to become one. Isn't that a bad thing? No, on the contrary, that's what makes it so cool. The brighter the light, the deeper the shadow. When you move towards the light, so shall the shadow behind you. That's the idea. Isn't it so freaking cool? A priest who dabbles in the rare dark magic over the common holy magic is the best. Ah, I understand now. It's like wanting to use a class or character that everyone else avoids. Well, you see, I just can't stand following a predestined path and living the way everybody else does. I always carve my own path. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that's cool. I think that's cool. Yeah, only a few of us can understand this charm. In any case, I'll need to give up the training so I can walk this path. Dark magic is so versatile that the possibilities are endless. Lucy, are you interested in learning dark magic? I'll give you one-to-one -one lessons with all my heart. Uh, maybe next time. Relationship with Kerwan has improved and we have a token of friendship. Uh, so yeah, when we get three of those... Uh, I think if we start a run with Karen, we'll get some benefit for her. 
Okay, let's recruit a new investigator. We get a choice uh, of a few to choose from. Uh, Joey, who is nominally healing, uh, but he actually does a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, Azar, uh, nominally DPS. Uh, Miss Chain, nominally uh, tank. Uh, and that's it. I'm going to take Miss Chain. I think she is really versatile. Um, she was on my team when I when I technically won the run. And she will join us in a minute. Uh, other stuff we can do at camp. We can use a camping item. Uh, so usually I think that will mean bread. Uh, so this is where we can use bread to restore everybody's health by 20%. But we don't need to because everybody's at full. Uh, blacksmith lets us combine relics or equipment uh, to make something else. We actually, uh, well, we do have two. We could combine the cubic ring and the bell of salvation, but uh, I think I'll just keep them as they are for now. Uh, so that'll do. And then before we go on, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier, uh, where I said you don't, relics don't get used immediately. You have to bring them to this relic display stand and put them in there, and then they appear at the top of the screen, and then we start getting the benefits from them. Uh, so this one, when we gain a barrier buff, we will gain nine additional barrier. I'm not sure we have anything currently that gives us barrier. I can't remember whether Miss Chain can. Um, but if we do, we'll get some benefit from that. Uh, and it's very easy to walk out of here and forget to equip your relics, which I've done before, and it's really annoying. Um, so I, like, I, I kind of like the idea of having to equip them before you can start using them, but uh, I wish it was easier to not forget that. Okay, second area, Misty Garden 2. So same basic biome as the last one. Um, let's go. Event. Uh, pop might contain something useful. Okay, tablets. Uh, I can use in battle to remove all weakening and CC debuffs. Sacrificial Toast. What is CC? Crowd control debuffs. Um, when you put a debuff on somebody, it does have that icon next to it. I know stun has that icon next to it. Um, but yeah, if we get any of those debuffs applied to us, uh, we can use that to get rid of it. Uh, that is the boss, so let's not go that way just yet. Let's do another fight. Crowd control, okay, stun or taunt. Cool, thank you. All right, uh, Shake Dust. So this is the card that we picked up from the previous fight. Uh, once, oh, is it going to keep coming back every battle? Oh, I thought we could use it once to get rid of it. Uh, it just gums up our deck. Uh, otherwise, we've got parry attack again, basic attacks, basic heals. What have we got? You're attacking in three, you're attacking in three. Uh, you don't have armor, you do um you uh let's try and take that one out first uh so parry attack would bring that back 24, it's not going to be enough to kill them. Maybe we can kill her, though. Uh, okay, so this comes back, so let's kill that hedgehog. You've collected some souls, thanks to your passive. Wait, remind me how your passive works again. Um, okay, every three enemies defeated, it gets one charge. Uh, we can get rid of this at zero cost. The only downside is it reduces the, the turn counter. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to uh, kill this. So let's just make sure we can kill her. Uh, when parry attack goes off, that'll finish her off. We now might as well do this because we're going to get attacked by this hedgehog regardless of whether we play this or whether we end our turn now. So that out. Uh, okay, so you've got uh, a bunch of your health 
in the healing gauge. Potentially problematic if she attacks uh, him, he's going to lose that health. Uh, but there's nothing we can do about it. End. Uh, oh, no, okay. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Our ability went off. Stopped her attacking anyway. Uh, can we just kill you? Uh, so we need to do... Uh, this was only going to do four damage. Ugh. Uh, what will that do? Maybe six? Four, six, six? Uh, that would do it. Cool. A uh, cubic ring, but it has some unknown power. You must equip it or identify it to learn its effect. Uh, gold and soul stones. So we could just equip this. There are items that have, I think, negative abilities. Uh, I came across one in my last run where you uh, you couldn't unequip the item after you'd equipped it, um, which didn't turn out to be too much of a problem in the end, but it could be. Uh, getting the stuff to identify things in this game is seems quite hard though. I find that I tend to get more unidentified stuff than I do things to identify it. So uh, I'm just going to be brave and I'm going to put it on Miss Chain. Uh, flawless, which I, I'm assuming that is flawless means debuff resist is increased by 10%. Is that right? Or does flawless mean something else? Because there's no keyword that pops up there. Um, anyway, that was a good thing. So that was fine. Let's level up Miss Chain as well. Uh, that gives her her passive burn. Uh, so she gains burn when she casts a skill or a fixed ability. Her health gauge is protected during burn. Um, and her skills gain bonus effects when cast during burn. And it says on her cards what they do if they cast uh, when she has the burn buff. Health gauge is protected during burn. I think that means she can't lose any green health bar if she gets hit. Um, so that's quite handy. Choice of cards, zoom, 15 damage. Uh, also two, inflicts two stacks of armor reduced. Uh, reduces armor by 33%. Uh, when the enemy takes damage, it loses a stack of the debuff. Uh, engine reload gives her death's door immunity. Uh, when there's two stacks, prevents her health from falling below one at uh, one time and gives Screech maximum health plus 20% aggro increased. Suit. Target takes pain damage equal... I've uh, got to apply it to an ally. Target takes pain damage equal to 25% of max health. You three of the target skills in the deck or discard pile and select one to draw. Its cost is reduced by two. That seems like a high price to pay for that. I'm going to go for zoom. Um, when you take a card as upgrade, the default is to replace basic attack uh, and heal cards, I think, with the card that you take. There is an option to turn that off, um, but that's the default. I usually just leave it on. All right, onwards. Decrepit Forge, spelt equipment or relics to transform them into other items of the same type, or go to the library restaurant. Have you random skills from investigators who are not in your party and pay a scroll to learn one skill? I don't have any scrolls. Uh, also not sure I want to smelt anything. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll go here and see. Um, are any of these items not particularly useful? I, I, yeah, I don't think I want to do any of that. You don't think there's no reason to have automatic basic removal? Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, I was, I was surprised by it first time. I was like, wait a minute. I haven't seen my basic attacks for a while. Where have they gone? And then it's like, oh, okay. They actually get automatically replaced. It's quite nice. Fountain of Wishes, a magical fountain that is said to make wishes come true. You get closer, the will of the fountain whispers to me. You are capable of handling the power of my wishes, but do remember the greater the wish, the greater the price. Forget Accelerate. So that was Lucy's skill that uh, reduces the cost of another skill by one and makes it, gives it swift. And learn one of four Lucy rare skills. Forget Accelerate and obtain a thousand gold. Forget Accelerate and obtain one of four relics. So this thing doesn't always offer you this. Uh, you have to get to, uh, I think it's basically Act 2 or Area 3 in the game before you do. Otherwise, it only offers you, I think, a key here. Uh, so this is the first time that I've seen this. Let's uh, forget Accelerate and change it for a rare skill. It's another version of the game where if you learn generic skills from books, you could pass them around to other characters. And you'd leave manual removal on, so you could do that without getting before the five, below the five skill minimum. Right, okay. Uh, money power. <laughs> Deal damage equal to 2.5% of your current gold. The last run, so, so when I unlocked this as a, a part of the meta progression. Um, and my last run I did, I got an early event that gave me 1,200 gold. I was like, oh my god, I need to get money power in this run because that will do insane amounts of damage. Um, and I kept taking the upgrade draw option when I got uh, to spend my experience. Uh, and I never got money power. And I guess I never got it because it's a rare skill. Uh, so you have to get it through something like this. Uh, um, yeah, gold is not bad at the moment. It's at 847 and 21 damage. Uh, I don't know though, 21 damage for 847 gold. It does give us a, you know, we could then try and prioritize getting gold and not spending it. Well, so we've got mass acceleration, reduce the cost of all skills in hand by one. Okay, that's pretty good. Meditate, uh, use it once per battle, copy all skills in your hand and shuffle them into your deck. These skills cost one less and gain swiftness and exclude. Pick up, reduce the cost of all skills in your discard pile by one and shuffle them back into your deck and draw a skill. I'm going to take money power. It gives us something to build towards, um, even though it's only one card. Uh, okay, we're dead in there. We need to go up here and up here. Let's go back to the beginning and then wander up this way. Trial of Bravery. Attempt a trial where you must withstand enemy attacks for a certain amount of turns, or obtain one cursed uncommon tier equipment, or obtain 1200 gold and a Lucy Curse skill. Actually, I think this is how I got my 1200 gold last time. Given what we have, uh, I'm going to take this. Uh, 1200 gold and a Lucy Curse. Slow response. Uh, move this skill to the top of the deck when a battle starts. So it just gums up our deck, basically. But it's not that bad. Um, and that means her card now is doing quite a lot of damage. 51 damage for two mana. And it's swift. We just got to remember not to spend any money on anything as well. Um, yeah, okay, we'll just wonder. Yeah. Uh, do we have any keys? We do not have any keys. So the is... Oh no, this is a shop. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to spend my money? Not really. Relic box at the start of battle is a relic. Fill empty relic inventory slots with random relics. So we could buy this, equip this after our next boss fight, and we would get basically two random relics for free. Uh, but given what we're trying to do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to not buy anything. I'm going to keep my money. Yeah, minus one draw on one, turn one with that curse. Yeah, that's right. Um, I was complaining about lack of enemy variety. I haven't seen these enemies before. Uh, okay, so he has taunt. Must defeat him first. Squeaky wooden joints. Increase receiving damage by 25% whenever a skill is played. 
uh, and you are just about to go. Okay, so this is swift, so we can just get rid of it. That's nice, because that increases uh, his receiving damage. That's actually helpful. Um, basic protect gives 10 barrier to somebody. Um, let's just give that to you. Uh, that triggered her burn as well. Wait, what triggers her burn? I thought it was when she played skills. When she casts a... Oh, was that her skill? That must have been her skill. Yeah, that must have been her skill. Sorry. It's her skill, but I cast it on him. Um, okay, and everything else is going to trigger the countdown. Can I just destroy this? Uh, I'd need something that can avoid taunt, like Sonic Blow. It's only 15 damage, though. Uh, so unless it crits, which is very unlikely, it's not going to kill it. Uh, and that can't ignore taunt. Uh, so I don't think we've got a way of killing that. Uh, this is swift. Uh, but with that can't ignore taunt either. Okay, well, we'll do that on him. We'll do Sonic Blow. Maybe we crit. Nah, we didn't. Uh, what did you just do? You gave us a debuff, but we all dodged it apart from Miss Chain. Maybe. We will do a basic heal uh, to get rid of the healing gauge part of Miss Chain's bar. That also increases the stacks of squeaky wooden joints. Um. I guess I hit you while you've got five stacks of that. 22 damage. Your thing. Give, um, you would have given bleed to him, but he resisted it. Um, target you with that. That is all we can do. Enter. One other thing about the battle I've mentioned so far is uh, this up here. So uh, starting from turn... Five it was. Uh, sorry, starting from turn four, sorry. Uh, all allies lose speed. In other words, we get to play fewer cards before the enemies react. We cannot overheal. Uh, so we can't heal anything that is not a green part of our health bar. Uh, and we take pain damage at the end of each turn. So basically this encourages us to complete fights quickly. Generally, I haven't found this to be a problem um, as of yet, but I guess maybe on high difficulties it could. For some reason, we've only drawn two cards. I assume that's something to do with the attacks that we received. Uh, sacrificial Toast, why have we only just drawn two cards? One problem with this game is some of the stuff is opaque because you can't see what the enemies are actually doing. Uh, it comes in quickly, and if you don't read it fast enough, uh, you don't figure out what's going on. Two cards per turn is normal. Wait, okay, so why do we... I guess that's because that's our card draw. But why do we normally draw more than two there? Um, we want to kill this thing. 1% evade chance, but we should be fine. We can just kill him. Oh no, we can't kill him with that. Oh no, we can't. So you've got taunt. Uh, we could kill with... Focus encroachment. Uh, so let's just do that. Uh, and then that passes the encroachment to him as well, which is nice. Um, the initial fight card draw is larger. Two pair investigative for turn one only. Okay, so every turn after that, it's only two. Do we... <laughs> I've done two full runs from this through this game, and I haven't noticed this yet. Any cards that we don't play, do they stay in our hand? Then? Uh, we can shoot you with that. And that's all we can do. Okay, so she did not resist bleeding. She's taking 10 damage per turn. Uh, that's pretty bad. Uh, if we kill him, though, the healing gauge won't matter. That will fully heal. Uh, but I'm not convinced we can heal him. 
Uh, let's draw... Hang on. Oh, shoot. Let's just count down, sorry. Let's draw two skills. You do hold cards between turns. Right, okay. Uh, okay, so, yeah. Now I'm seeing why Lucy get... Because all, basically all of Lucy's skills are all card draw related. Okay, let's see why that's important. Um... Do we just try to kill him? Probably. Uh, that's only 8 damage. Will this do 24, 34, 37? With that as well, we should kill him. Oh, but it, no, I forgot about the cost increase. Um... Okay, but we're doing more damage anyway, so hopefully. This is going off for what, 24? Okay, he's dead. Uh, but just in case something goes wrong, let's dark heal herself. Uh, we can discard this and try and get a one cost card. Oh, nice. Didn't even have to wait for that. Scroll of Midas transforms an item into gold. You think we don't want? Mm, I guess not right now. It could be useful for boosting that damage off Lucy's card. Uh, Lucy has two skill pools, rares like money power and card draw skills that you get from taking that level up option. Right, okay. Speaking of which, we've got four soul stones to spend. Let's, uh, let's take card draw. Charge Thurible. Uh, draw two skills and charge the soul thurible by one. Interesting, so the options that she gets are dependent on party members as well. Because obviously soul thurible is only something that Charon has. So I'm guessing if she wasn't in our party, we wouldn't see this option at all. Uh, draw two skills. Nice. I, I, there's a lot of really nice stuff in this game. It's. It's a really, yeah, I really, I really like it. I really like it. It feels quite original. Uh, draw two skills, charge soul thurible by one. Draw another skill if soul thurible was fully charged. Uh, draw skill, draw one additional skill for two turns. Or discard the bottom skill in your hand and draw three. Um, I'm going to take that. Let's go for some synergy. Uh, we've got two soul stones. That's n oh, that is enough to level up. That is enough to level up. I'm gonna level up Miss Chain. Engine reload. Uh, okay, we saw that before. Shred them all. Targets all enemies. Ten damage. If we have burn, it will increase all enemy pain and weakening debuff stacks by one. That's super useful because we're playing with Charon as well, who inflicts a lot of pain. Debuff. Debuffs. Uh, so yeah, increasing the number of stacks will increase the amount of damage that they do. Uh, or Pursuit, which we saw before. Take Shred them all. Uh, Hasty Counter is pretty fun if you get the Witch Boss. Charge their is super good. Okay. I've got no keys, so there's no point in going in there, because it will just have a locked chest in it. Pretty sure it's always the same. See an abandoned church? It's got a lock chest. I mean, that's what the icon means anyway. Uh, let's do this first. A bag of gold coins. Very nice. And a new record. Project progress. So these are things that we can um, listen to back in our bedroom at the start of the run. It's kind of like a weird sort of um, computer interface. Uh, type thing. I love the retro kind of CD-ROM type thing. Um, and it just kind of gives you some sort of backstory on the, the lore of the game. Alright, so you've got Taunt. Uh, four, four, three countdown. So we can we kill you before your thing goes off? Uh, we'll get rid of that. 
We have money power, 64 damage. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Goodbye. Stack time, draw two or restore three mana. Uh, if we restore three mana, we could play Hell Arrow and kill another one of them. So let's do that. Uh, that is yours as well. We've got five mana. We can kill that. So if we do that. And then we should be able to finish. Uh, maybe we can't finish you off as well. <sighs> Close. Oh, but you just healed yourself. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you do that. Identification scroll, a scroll that can identify an item. Okay, having said we usually have more unidentified stuff than identification scrolls. Uh, now the opposite is true. Three more soul stones. Let's level up somebody. Uh, let's level up you. Tracking scope. Countdown four. Uh, when cast, immediately gain a supply arrow buff and draw one skill. All allies fixed abilities gain 100% crit chance while this skill is in cooldown. Okay, imitate. Uh, add a random ally attack to hand and give it exclude. Cost becomes one against supply arrow buff, but its damage is reduced by 80%. Or lightning shots, damage 22, ignore taunt. Damage is increased by four for each skill in hand, not including this skill. Take that. Ah, uh, we were going this way. Another church. I still don't have any keys. Uh, and there are none up there. Oh. And we've not explored down here. Made Dormitory. Battle against an elite monster. Earn a special prize upon winning. Uh, abandoned, work, uh, abandoned warehouse. Obtain two scrap metal which can be used in reforging equipment. In addition, use a key or obtain a Lucy curse skill to obtain two useful scrap metal of rare tier. Can we use the scrap metal in the... Is it a forge to the west? I can't remember now. Or was that just a thing for changing our reforging our equipment um i took this on a previous run and i never found anywhere to use the scrap metal i think it's just clogging at my inventory i kind of don't want to take that um i kind of think we should just battle an elite monster the place where made dolls reside made dolls are busily busily walking around the dormitory we will just walk in and attack them Okay, 97 health. We have money power. So that'll do 68. Uh, yeah, let me get rid of that. Hit you with money power. Or 57 because you have 15% armor. Okay, she is queued up. Whack. 23 damage. The attack prioritizes an enemy who has most recently damaged it. This is pretty nasty. Uh, can we kill? I don't know if we can. Not sure that we can. Uh, do that. Do zoom. Oh shoot, zoom reduced armor. I should have done that first. Uh, let's get rid of the basic heal because we don't need it anyway. Burning arrow. We gain the mana, we can cast that. So, uh, let's do that. Burning arrow. Okay, that triggered your attack. A regular attack. Whack is still going to trigger 
and it's gonna hit uh it's gonna hit johan for 23 which is gonna put him at death's door uh, but that's okay basically if any of the characters has a red part of their health bar they can survive one hit uh the problem problem though is that she still has an, uh, an action left so if she hits him or if this goes off and hits him and then she hits him that'll kill him uh so things can go south pretty quickly okay you dodged that well done uh good i mean he dodged whack I'm not sure anyway you are dead not bad for an elite two bread a key yay skill book healing 101 do we have a support character i don't think we have anybody that can use this in gold uh yeah no, 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 nobody can use that. But, but we have the Scroll of Midas. So we will use that to turn, I suppose we, we, we will pick up a fourth character, uh, but I think I am just gonna get rid of that. 500 gold and that'll increase the damage of uh, Lucy's money power card. Okay, now we've got a key. We can open one of these chests. So, I don't know what's in either of them, so it doesn't matter which one we pick. Rapier, attack power plus 10%, crit chance plus 5%, speed plus 1. Uh, so that means we'll, the party will get more actions before the enemies react, which is good. Tiguk ring, attack power plus 3, healing power plus 3, crit chance minus 6%. Take the rapier. And... Uh, who is doing most of our attacks? Uh, I guess it's between... Oh, well, I guess... She's got quite a few attacks. I'll give it to her. Uh, and then out we go. Okay, I think we've done everything. We've explored everywhere. Boss time. And this is the first shard. Okay, 231 health. You're kind of strong. And you've put some stuff on our cards. Shatter module. Discarded after one turn. Golem casts Earth Shatter if this skill remains in hand. Uh, when cast create a skill and reduce its cost by one so we, i think we basically this is kind of a good thing this is a yeah this is a bad thing uh we obviously don't want him to cast earth shatter i don't know exactly what it does but it's going to be bad so oh uh, discarded after one turn This is just going to reduce his action count by one, I think. So I don't think this will make him attackers. So it doesn't matter. Uh, just use it to get rid of it. Let's get rid of that. Uh, focus encroachment. Okay, so that's going to do six damage per turn. He is 30% resistant to pain debuffs which is what encroachment is. It's got that purple skull. Um, so I'm guessing that means it's 113% minus 30% chance of inflicting it on him. Uh, let's just dark heal on you. Uh, select a skill to create. Stigma. Whenever a party member loses health, this character receives 5 damage. When a party member loses health, a party member does crit damage. Tempest. Which skill in hand, fire an additional arrow that deals 8 additional damage. Uh, we've got 3 mana left. Engine reload. Let's go for Tempest. And 
end. Uh, we can cast that as well. Let's do that. You still got the debuff from the last fight. Really? <sighs> okay. Uh, I feel like that should have gone away. Active until this stage ends. Anyway. Enter. Tempest goes off. Uh, do we want to discard the two highest skills in our hand? Or the bottom two skills in our hand? It doesn't make any difference. They're both the same. Okay, that was a big attack. This chain has been stunned. Which means she can't cast any actions. Uh, it's not a problem right now because we don't have any of our actions in our hand. If we did, we would have to use this to discard one of them to get rid of the stun. Uh, or use... Uh, it's not a pain debuff, it's a CC debuff. We could use tablet to get rid of that as well. Um, mm, damage increased by 4 for each skill in hand, not including this skill. So we want to cast this earlier. We'll do this first though. So then casting that. We'll bring that back. I didn't actually read the bottom part of that skill. Anyway. Uh, let me absorb you. Can be used twice. Deal 12 pain damage to the selected ally and create forbidden flame in hand. If the ally which is death stored due to the damage increase forbidden flames damage by 16. Uh, forbidden flame. Damage 24. Okay. Or evil phantasm. We played this turn if an ally is damaged by another ally while this skill is in hand. Okay. Guess so that's why it's greyed out. Really don't want to deal pain damage to allies. Discarding cards. Ugh, also not great. Take that. We need to play this to get rid of it. We don't want him to cast Earth Shatter. Uh, that's pretty bad. Thankfully, everybody dodged. We need to heal these two. We have no he Do we have any healing skills? Okay, now I'm worried. Uh, we've got her soul therable thing. Charge by one for every three enemies defeated. Yeah, it's kind of a problem with a single boss. Mm. Okay, play that. Reduce his armor. I'm worried about I'm actually worried about us dying here. This isn't gonna matter, we're not gonna be able to recast this. Um When does it? I thought we got to create a skill there. Did not happen. Okay, I guess we just hit you with that. God. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay, now we create. Okay, dark heal. Uh, yeah, dark heal. That's basically... Oh, nobody gets discarded by the Tempest. Okay, that's really bad. Really bad. Uh, so he's at death door. If he gets hit again, he's dead. Um, and I have no way to heal. Parry attack apply weakening debuff that grants 15% armor reduction. Apply two stacks of armor reduction if there's only one target. 
while this skill is under countdown if the selected target attacks a party member. <sighs> Direct the attack to yourself and cast the skill immediately. Uh, I do, but I don't know how to charge it. Oh, it's got two charges now. Oh, I didn't really... Okay, I was, I was waiting for the uh, thing to appear there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so he's back from Death Storm. So he's got a bit of the red health bar, so he won't die if he gets hit again. That's good. Um, oh, man, this is rough. Uh, I guess we do this, we get rid of that. And... 13 damage. It's 9 damage. Uh, it would give us another stack of supply hours. Does that restore a mana immediately? With that, let's cast that as well. Yes. Uh, soon reduces armor further. Burning arrow tracking scope. Cast immediately gain supplier a buff and draw a skill. Fixed abilities gain crit chance. I think I'm just gonna do that because he's got 20% armor. Which we need to get rid of. Do we have what do you have? Crack control resistant burn. Okay, so they're both good that did a nice chunk of damage okay he's back at death's door again minus 26 health so there is no way we can heal him we have to heal him back over zero so basically we either kill him now or he's dead um hell arrow 27 damage but you are minus 28 percent armor so i think that kills you i think it kills you it does okay that fight was a bit rough i feel like i'm lacking damage we didn't even see the money power card uh dark heal didn't see much in the way of healing there either I should take more dark heals. Rain of arrows. Uh, nine damage, four additional damage for each close range shot played during the last turn and this turn. Illusion arrow. Uh, 12 damage. Attack twice, prioritizing the selected target. The cost of all ally fixed abilities are reduced until you use them three times. I'll take a dark heal. Okay, another identification scroll. Gold, soul stones. Atomic reactor relic. Every two turns, apply enhance module to a random skill. Uh, so that was the beneficial effect that we were getting in that fight. Um, box friendship. <laughs> Another skill book for healing 101. Soul stone and credits. I don't have, yeah, I only had one Midas scroll, obviously. Uh, okay, let's grab the shard. Our first one and move on to the next stage first let's all hang out around the campfire uh Kara, what do you collect their souls for they're delicious delicious excuse me I'd like to share a meal together okay we have obtained a violin who seems like they would like to play some music? Um, I don't know. Johan, you look like a violin player. How would you like that? It is a gift for you. You put it to good use. I'm glad to hear it. You seem to be politely thankful. No, oh, I didn't even get a friendship. Um, no, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Lucy, are you sure we're on the right path? You're not lost or anything, are you? Uh, maybe. 
So the idea is Lucy is the guide and she's the only one who knows how to find these uh, time shard things. And the investigators are basically just her bodyguards. What are you doing hiding in a corner like that? Come here so we can talk. But Johan, you're a little scary. Scary? So, <clears throat> um, the closed eyes. What's that have to do with anything? I don't know. I'm not a scary person. But how should I say it? Uh, Johan, you always seem angry. I've never once been angry at you. Maybe it's because you always seem on edge. I think that's why I feel this way. Maybe true to some extent. Because I'm obsessed with revenge. Revenge? It's a long story. Our break time's almost over, so how about we discuss this on the next opportunity? Okay. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think I've noticed when he opens. Has he opened his eyes yet? I haven't seen. We've got a token of friendship anyway. Um we should i mean so it doesn't matter whether we use the bread as a camping item because these guys are both at full health um but i will use some to try and heal johan a bit um hopefully that should be enough upgrade something uh reduce the cost by one after ending the turn or 20 percent increased damage against taunting enemies uh Sure, you come across quite a few taunting enemies. Um, what's doing a decent amount of damage? Lightning shot. Let's put it on lightning shot. Uh, a blacksmith can create a new item by reforging two items, which can increase the items tier. Oh, does it? I thought it was 20% regardless. This is uh, usable in the field to restore an ally's health by 20% or campfire restore all allies' health by 20%. Um, yeah. Do we have two items? Uh, maybe. We don't need that. Oh, that's not a... It's a consumable, not equipment. Okay. Then I don't think we do... So, I'll do. Do we have a relic? We do have a relic. Let's put the relic in the display case. Uh, so now every two turns we'll get enhanced module applied to a random skill. Decent. Um, and that is it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this, is, uh, this is for saving. There's sometimes a donation box here. There's no donation box this time. Not sure why. But I guess we don't want to donate money anyway. 3,600. How much damage is Lucy's card doing now? 91. That's absolutely nuts. Uh, let's spend some soul stones and upgrade some people. Uh, let's level up Karen. Uh, we could get another focus encroachment. 12 damage per turn, dark barrier, 8 damage to an ally, blah, 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 vigil of darkness. Um, increase receiving damage by 25% on an enemy, reduce their evade chance, reduce their pain resist chance. When attacked, they gain one encroachment. Um, Sure, I'll take that. I do have the relic that boosts barriers. That's right, I'd forgotten about that. I had forgotten about that. Okay, can't level up these individual characters anymore. It now costs four. We can add card draw. Let's do that. Craft arrows, draw a skill. This turn, whenever you restore mana with supply arrows, draw another skill. Burning draw, draw two skills and grant burn to the selected target. Uh, so this obviously synergizes with, um, uh, what's her name? Fire Lady. 
No, a hasty counter, discard the bottom skill in your hand and draw three skills. I'd craft arrows, synergizes with um, Johan. Take burning draw. And done. Uh, that's probably a good place to wrap it up for now. Uh, next time we will continue on into the rest of the game. But until then, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. This is BDL. I'm signing out. Bye for now.